If I asked you, what's the population of India? What would you say? Just under a million? Over a billion? Well, as of right now, it's probably somewhere in the range of 1.3 to 1.4 billion. But now to a more important question, since this is a podcast about fintech and financial services. How many of those people have a payment card? It doesn't matter whether it's a debit card or credit card. How many of those have a payment card? Can you guess? On this episode of Inside the Vacuum, I speak with Jajit from Zubcash, all the way from India. Usually, this podcast focuses on fintech founders or people trying to make cool and interesting things in the financial services space. But this time, I'm talking about a topic that is absolutely mind-boggling to most Europeans and Americans, and that is the massive size of the Indian market or generally the Asian market right now. They're massively growing economies. We recently had Branjo from Vietnam talking about how that market is very different to what we see in Europe. And today I have Jajit from Zapcash to tell us more about how they are changing the way small merchants accept payment in India. So Zajit, what does Zapcash do and how do you work? We convert a smartphone into a payment acceptance terminal and it's able to accept payments from any digital board. So be it cards with NFC or cards without NFC or with uh, phones with NFC or phones without NFC or from a QR code based payment. So we are, we enable our merchants to accept payments from any of these modes of uh, payment that is out there. As therefore, once the application is downloaded onto our merchant's phone and the soft pass is there, uh, there is no which way that they will not be able to accept a payment from the customers. So what this really means is that millions of merchants around India are now empowered to just download an app and start using it to accept payments. So the immediate question that comes up after that, is there even a market for it? Is there even POS terminal penetration that people just don't need it yet? Well, this is when I started to get really surprised by the scale at which things happen in India. If you look at China or even Brazil, they have got more than one payment terminal for every 100 citizens. We've got less than one for every 426 citizens. So that's the difference that we have between uh, China, Brazil and uh, India. And uh, currently the payment terminal officially, the penetration of payment terminal is about 10% of the merchants. Unofficially, it's about 5% because there are a large number of people out there who are not typically merchants, but they need payment acceptance. So at this point, you must be thinking, this is people selling food on the street. This is small merchants selling things that they manufactured immediately in the marketplace somewhere. But that's not really true. This goes all the way up in the food chain of merchants. There are doctors out there. There are also merchants. There are ticketing agents. There are carpenters. There are electricians. There are taxi drivers. They're all merchants. They all need to accept um, payments. But uh, statistically, they are not counted as merchants. Uh, so if we count all of them as merchants, uh, everybody who needs payment acceptance, then we have only about 5% penetration of payment terminals in India. You heard that correctly. There's only 5% penetration of payment terminals in India. Doesn't mean that there's just 5% of the population have cards? Not really. And this is where the big surprise arrives. So fortunately, because of the government intervention in the last four or five years, 360 million new accounts have been opened to those who never had a bank account. And so there are 360 million new debit cards out there. So there is a total of 850 million debit cards in India and about 50 million credit cards out there. So there are 900 million card owners, which means practically every adult in India has a card. And therefore, they can make a payment as long as there is a payment terminal on the other side. So at this point, as a European, this starts to really make my brain go haywire. I mean, 900 million owners of cards. That's practically twice the size of the European market, depending on how you look at it. It's possibly three times the size of the American market. This is just massive. Like, (laughs) 
this is absolutely incredible. Having 900 million card owners and about 360 million of those being completely new in the market, that's just massive. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are extremely bullish. Uh, we believe we are the right place, right time. The government did most of the heavy lifting. They did the job of providing a bank account and a card to everybody in the country. We are just leveraging that and putting a, a layer of technology on top of it to take it to a logical conclusion. And at this point in their growth, they're really focusing on their core market, which is using Androids. They're going to support iOS eventually, but for now, Android is the focus. We haven't gone ahead to support iPhone as of now because the, the point is that we're really targeting those who are a little lower in the, in the pyramid of merchants. And uh, if somebody can afford an a, a iPhone, they would rather buy a dedicated payment terminal also. Targeted towards those who are not in that income bracket. And more importantly, even if there are chains, and there are a lot of our customers who own chains of shops, they would not go ahead and buy an iPhone for their employees so that they can do the billing. And, and hence, logically, from a business perspective, it makes sense for us to only stick to Android. However, we start getting requests from the doctors and, and architects and so on to also support iPhone because for them, it's fit for purpose. So you can't expect to go to a doctor who then takes out a, a large POS machine from his pocket. In many of these circumstances, they can take out their phone and make a payment and they wouldn't like to carry an Android phone and an iPhone. We basically want to enable everybody else's application to be able to have a payment system. So we would like to go deeper into all the industries and, uh, and go deeper into the supply chain of payments uh, or the value chain of payments. And therefore, we are providing a solution as a white label SDK, which can then be plugged in into various kinds of other processes, where at the end of the process, you have payments, you have payment reconciliation, and you are able to trace back and link it back to multiple other processes, which is why we're providing a solution as a white label SDK. It is embedded as part of a larger value chain of processes and systems. So at this point, if you're operating out of India, you're now asking, how can I use this? How can I start working with this in my app or start using this as a merchant? If you're in India, they simply go to the Android store and download uh, Zoopos and that's it. Uh, it's called Veeam Zoopos and they simply download it and start using it. We haven't launched it in uh, countries outside of um, uh, of India as of now, but we are handling all of those conversations from our Singapore office. Uh, we are registered in Singapore, and that's where we are uh, handling all the conversations outside of India, uh, because we need to make sure that it's aligned to the payment regulatory regulations in each of the countries. Uh, and hence, we we are right now live in India, but we will be launching in other countries, perhaps in partnerships. In fact, we are looking forward to partnerships in other countries where. The payment aggregator work is done by our partner and we provide the technology. So you can find all the links in the description. So feel free to click there and go directly to either sign up or find out more. And if you want to reach Jajit directly, here is his email address. My email address is jbh at zup.cash, which is C-A-S-H. So it's very simple. It's jbh at zup.cash. I'm available there. And I look forward to having a conversation with anybody who's interested. I would like to thank Jajit so much for his time. This was a really interesting, quick conversation. And if you're curious, we actually managed to record this in the middle of a virtual fintech conference. This was actually part of the virtual fintech fair. We are both exhibitors there, both us as Vacuum Labs and him as Zupcash. And I would like to also thank Mushir, one of the organizers of the Virtual Fintech Fair, for actually empowering us to have this conversation. I just find the Indian market extremely fascinating and mind-boggling. It's an extremely massive economy with lots of growth potential. So if you're interested in finding out more about how you can get started there, definitely reach out to Jajid via his email address or just reach out to me and find out more about how we could work together in the Indian market. Thank you so much for listening today. This is another one of those shorter episodes. Uh, if you enjoy these, please let me know. And Please follow more of these episodes either on Spotify or on all the major podcasting platforms. Thank you. Thank you so much. My name is Marcel. I'm the host of Inside the Vacuum. And we have a few more very interesting guests coming up in the next few weeks. So please sign up. 
so that you can hear them immediately as it comes out. Thank you, take care, and have a wonderful week.